So years ago, I picked up an MBA at the University of Texas at Austin. Great school. I met a lot of really smart people there, one of them being a foreign student from China, my friend Jing. Now, both of us had applied that summer for an internship at Apple. It was a really selective process. They were looking for certain types of experience. They were looking for a near-perfect GPA. And the reality is only one in five people at our business school even got an invite to interview. Now, it turns out I didn't make the initial cut, but my friend Jing did. Now, I was excited for him because this was a dream job for him. Now, at UT, the interview rooms are all together. I happen to be in the hallway walking by and minutes before his interview, I run into Jing. I shake his hand. I wish him luck. I look down and my mouth drops. No, no. Now, at this point in my life, I'm not a men's style expert, but I am a fresh graduate of the United States Marine Corps. And the mistake Jing was making was glaring in front of me. Now, if I just had 30 minutes, I could have fixed the problem. But Jing didn't have but like 30 seconds before he had to be in that interview room. So, I just didn't say anything hoping the interviewer didn't notice. Now, here's the deal. This mistake should not have been a big deal. It's totally correctable. Seriously, 25 bucks in about 25 minutes could have solved the problem. And what's crazy is the average student was spending like $100,000 there for their MBA. And the stupid mistake that Jing was oblivious to was about to put his future with Apple in jeopardy. Now, straight up, gents, over the years, I've seen a lot of men make this mistake. And I can't tell you for certain if this is the reason that Jing never did get a callback from Apple. But what I can tell you is when you're dressed up, when you're wearing a suit, when you're trying to look high status. This mistake, it breaks the illusion. It pops the balloon. It makes you look like a country bumpkin fresh off the boat. Now you see his dilemma. Now, gents, I can't go back in time and help Jing, but I can share with you in today's video the tiny mistakes that are making you look low status. Because, gents, if you're watching this video, you've got a future. You see yourself as a man of potential. You're a one in a million. You're that future business owner, that future engineer, that future doctor, that future lawyer. You are a guy that's going to go out there and make a difference. So, what was the mistake? Well, it wasn't that his fly was down. That would have been obvious and an easy fix in a matter of seconds. No, the mistake was his shoes three things in particular. First up, and perhaps the least egregious of all the errors, was that he was wearing an open lace type of shoe. These are known as bluchers. They are more casual. They're not really meant to be worn with a suit. Now, if you're going to be wearing a dark colored business suit, you want to wear a closed lacing system. Now, the second error, and this one was a bit bigger, is he was wearing the wrong color. So, because the image is seared in my mind, I remember Jean was wearing a black suit. Well, with that black suit, he had paired light brown shoes. Now, if it had been a navy suit and he was trying to be fashion forward, he could have made this combination work. If you're wearing a black suit, which I don't recommend, I'd recommend a charcoal suit. But if you're wearing a black suit, at least wear black colored shoes. And yeah, if I would have had 25 minutes, I could have ran to my apartment, which is right next to campus, and maybe gotten him an extra pair of my shoes. But the biggest mistake, and the one that I'm like, Jing, what are you thinking? Because he wasn't thinking. His shoes were not polished and the laces were falling apart. Now, if you're new to this channel, you're probably thinking, Antonio, there is no way that that one small mistake would sink his interview. And to you, I say, never underestimate how judgmental your fellow human beings can be. Because the reality is, gents, even professional interviewers are human and they judge a book by its cover. If you don't look like you fit in, if you don't look like part of their tribe, well, they may not say that's the reason they're not hiring you, but you can rest assured that it played a part in the decision. Now, this next mistake, there is no hiding from. And it's something a lot of guys, even when they look in the mirror, they don't notice. But the ladies, yeah, they spot it instantly. Now, before I reveal this next mistake, let's talk about today's sponsor, Lifen. Now, gents, if you're looking for a simple way to step up your grooming, improve your style without really having to do anything to your routine, except add one step to when you brush your hair, gents, you need to check out Lifen and their line of hair dryers. Seriously, I've got two of these things and they are the best hair dryers I have ever owned in my life. Gents, when you are brushing and styling your hair by using a hair dryer, by using heat to mold the shape and style of your hair, guys, it's going to transform the way you can style your hair. And for those of you guys in your 30s, 40s, 50s with thinning hair, if you want your hair to look more full, gents, having a tool like the Life & Swift hair dryer is going to make it so much easier to get the look that you're going for with your hair. Which, by the way, they've got some great options for you. They've got the SC, they've got the Swift Premium, they've got the Classic Swift, and they've got the Swift Special. But what all of them do, gents, is they dry your hair quickly. Because they're using a stronger engine that's pushing the air faster, it's going to dry your hair five times faster. Now, every Life & comes with different heat settings. You're going to have the cool, you're going to have medium, you're going to have hot. And all of them come with heat damage protection. So, the temperature of the hair dryer never goes to a point that it could actually damage your hair, which is important to know one of the reasons you don't want to use those cheaper hair dryers. And my favorite thing about life and as a guy with five kids and a baby in the house is that they are incredibly 
quiet. Seriously, when I'm getting ready in the morning, when my daughters are getting ready in the morning and using this hair dryer, nobody hears them outside of the bathroom. Gents, I'm linking the Lifen down in the description of today's video with the best deal on the web. The Lifen Swift makes a great Christmas, birthday, or holiday gift too. This is the perfect high value gift for someone who loves styling their hair. Go over to Lifen, check them out awesome company, proud to support them. So, on to that next mistake. This is one that is right in front of guys when they're looking at themselves in the mirror, but they don't spot it because to them, most guys are oblivious to this. Guys, I'm talking about not paying attention to the details on your grooming. So, first up, the easy one. Let's talk about the forest growing out of your nose. Now, I know a lot of you guys are saying, well, hey, I don't have any hair coming out of my nose. Well, unfortunately, you're looking at this at the wrong angle. See, even if you're five foot four, your girlfriend who is five foot, guess what? She's looking up to you and what does she see? Right up into those nostrils. And gents, if you've got a forest up there that sometimes catches things as they're coming out, it is not the best look. Now, I have an undergrad in biology. I understand the purpose of hair in the nose. But the reality is once a week getting in there and trimming that bush will do wonders for those looking up to you. Now, a less obvious area is going to be the eyebrows and I'm not talking about shaping your eyebrows. What I'm talking about is basic grooming. If you've got three random huge hairs right in the center, maybe consider removing those. I know for me, once I passed the age of 30, I started getting these random really long hairs in the eyebrows. Well, consider cutting those. In fact, in case you didn't know, when you go see your barber or your stylist, you can actually ask them to take care of your eyebrows and your nose hairs. And while they're doing that, don't forget to ask them to clean out the ear hair as well. Now, does this all really make you look low status? You could argue no, but what this does make you look is oblivious. Oblivious to the small steps that you could take to look better. Because I know that you're an amazing guy, that you've got that fancy degree, that you've got that awesome experience, that you have that enthusiasm for running that nonprofit. But human beings in general are judgmental. So, why not be judged as somebody that pays attention to the details? Because let's face it, you do on things that you know a lot about. If you're into cars, like my nephew, he notices everything about vintage vehicles. In the same way that you would spot a mismatch of maybe tires with a vehicle or a bad repair job, well, you got to expect if you're out there dating and you want to attract an attractive woman who puts herself together, well, she's going to look at how you put yourself together. Because even those guys that look like they're not trying, a lot of times that's a sprezzatura. Basically, that's an Italian term coined by, I think it was the book of the messenger. And they talk about it's like the duck on top of the water. It looks smoothly, but what you don't see are the feet swimming rapidly. Now, this next mistake at best makes you look like a tryhard. And the worst part is how much some people are paying for these outfits. Gents, in case you haven't picked up on it yet, I'm talking about the wearing of oversized logos. Now, the sad reality is that some people are paying a premium for these and they're actually knockoffs. They're not even the real thing. Because let's face it, Gucci did not authorize this. Now, to their defense, Gucci and some of these other fashion brands have put out some pretty hideous pieces. But the reality is, with manufacturing the way it is, you can buy anything with any logo. And some people seem to think that the bigger the logo, the better. Gents, my thoughts on this are to keep the logo at a minimum. In fact, if you don't even see a logo, that's better. Instead, focus in on the style pyramid, which is fit, fabric, and function. Seriously, unless you're getting paid to wear the logo, why would you sport this huge one and be like a billboard for the brand? Well, we know the reason. People are trying to borrow credibility. They're trying to associate themselves with that tribe. They're wanting to fit in. And hey, who am I to judge? I was over in Japan and you see all of these fashion brands, people getting into this. It was like the highlight of their day. With streetwear, Supreme, Bathing Ape, it's huge. I've seen it. But gents, I have a feeling you're like me and that we know that status comes from within. Your clothing, it should help enhance your natural look, but you really shouldn't be relying on big logos to, you know, to feel good about yourself. The next mistake, and this is classic, Buddy Ryan is all defense and no offense. Now, deodorant is a great thing, but think of it like defense. It's simply ensuring that you don't smell bad. Well, guys, if you want to score compliments or something else, you need to consider finding a signature fragrance. When I say signature scent, I'm talking about something you wear again and again. That smell becomes synonymous with you walking into the room. Now, you don't have to go overboard here. Here are three safe designer fragrances that are easy to find, yet unique enough that you're going to stand out from the crowd. All three of these, by the way, are excellent compliment magnets as well. Seriously, this Lunarosa Ocean EDP, the ladies love it. Really quick story time. As you guys know, I love fragrances. I've got over 500 of them. In my area, I guess I've got the reputation as the best smelling guy around. At ballet, I'm the best smelling dad. I walk into Starbucks. After going there for a few weeks, I had three of the baristas ask me, okay, we're trying to guess what you do. They thought I was a doctor or a lawyer. They had all these interesting things. But the fact is, they remember me. You're always, you always smell so good. Gents, if you want to elevate your status, the first step is to actually be remembered. And people remember things that smell good. So, find your signature scent and smell amazing. So, the next style mistake that 
lowers your status is not following the dress code. Now, you may be thinking, what dress code? At my office, when I go out on the weekend at home, there isn't a dress code. Well, try showing up to work in a chicken suit. Go out on the weekend in a ballerina outfit. Hang around the house naked. Now, you may be able to get away with that last one, but it's safe to say if you were to wear something that was really outside of the ordinary, you would get stares. You would actually maybe feel a little bit self-conscious. You definitely can't be out there showing up to work naked unless you work in a nudist colony. See, there's an expectation. There is a dress code always, even if it's unspoken. Now, some people choose to ignore this and they want to fight against it. But if you understand that there is an unspoken dress code, why not simply swim with the current? It's a lot easier and you can use it to your advantage. Seriously, if you're a lawyer in a construction firm, if you're a consultant at a very casual creative office, you can still use your clothing in a way to be able to send a message before you even open your mouth. Because even though that lawyer could dress down, but the fact that he dresses up shows that he pays attention to the details. Again, not saying you have to and you don't have to dress up, but if you're the guy making sure that every multi-million dollar contract has all the T's crossed and I's dotted, it's reassuring to people that you actually pay attention that you look the part of that high ticket lawyer that's getting paid, you know, five to 10 times more than the average construction guy. At that creative company, you want to connect with the people that are doing the creative work. And yes, you're not going to be doing the drawing. You're not going to be doing the designing, but you can wear those red glasses that you always get compliments on and that people know, hey, you've got like five to seven different pairs, different colors, and people appreciate the fact that you bring a little bit of fun and creativity, even if it's something as simple and muted as your eyewear. A piece of advice I always try to tell people is have a uniform. Think through once what kind of message you want to send, maybe once a year, a couple times a year, change it up, then have clothing that you can default to that sends the message you want to send to people that you interact with on a daily basis. So, for this next mistake, let's have a little bit of fun. Of these images right here, which man looks smarter? Which one looks more competent? Which one looks, yeah, just simply like they're hanging out? Now, I know some of you guys are going to disagree because you saw probably where I'm going with this, but there was a study years ago that I read that talked about the more skin that somebody shows on both men and women, the less serious people take them. In fact, when it comes to perceptions of intelligence, if you're showing too much skin, you are perceived as being less intelligent. Now, I get it. It's hot. You want to be wearing shorts. You want to be wearing that short sleeve. In fact, you want to take your shirt off. But the reality is you're down in Central America. You're down in Mexico. You're down in South Texas. And you notice that actually at this event, everyone's just wearing really lightweight linen shirts that are long sleeve. They are still wearing tropical weight wool trousers and not shorts. In fact, this is why many Americans get a bad rap because in many parts of the world, wearing shorts is actually actually for kids. Grown men wear trousers. Now, whether you agree with that or not, the point is if you are going to be in a situation which you want to maintain a higher level of status, you want to make sure that you're fully covering the skin. I'm not saying you can't roll up your sleeves. I'm not saying that you can't wear shorts, but when you wear trousers, when you wear long sleeve shirts, when you don't have five buttons undone, you are giving a bit more of a sophisticated look. Now, gents, if you're liking this video, you are going to love this one because I didn't repeat the same stuff in this video. I go into other details, other mistakes that you probably want to avoid. So, if you want to continue on, yeah, check out this video right here. We'll go over more mistakes. I promise I didn't have any duplicates and uh, yeah, you'll enjoy it. Check it out. Boom. Come on.